This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at media management for video editing. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll illustrate a variety of techniques to manage media in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Specifically, I want to show you some key preference settings that make a difference in media. Then we'll explain why you want to use the media browser and not just file import to bring in files. We'll look at how to create and display proxy files, how to rename clips and create bins, which we've been able to do since the beginning of time, but more importantly, why and how to add metadata to our clips and add search folders to give us much more control over the clips that we're editing. Let's go to Premiere. First thing that I want to do is notice the media browser down here. Let's just press the tilde key to bring that up full screen. And let's go to a favorite location. Okay, so here we've got our folders. Now notice that I'm in the media browser. Why do I want to be in a media browser? Because in the past, like many of us, I would go up to File, go down to Import, Command-I, and bring in the files the same way that I've done with Premiere since, gosh, the beginning of time. But I couldn't see the files, which is fine if I know what the file looks like, but not fine if I don't. In my case, let's go find something I'm looking for fish. Jim Walker's created some very nice underwater footage, so we'll work with Jim Walker's footage. First, I'm able to see what my media looks like, and by grabbing this slider, I can make the thumbnails a variety of different sizes or look at it as a list rather than as thumbnails. But thumbnails are cuter. We'll work with them. To bring a file in, hold the control key down, control click on it, and say import, and whatever files you have selected will be imported into Premiere. These files are small. They're all optimized as 1280720 because for the purposes of training, working with larger files doesn't mean the software operates differently, and I can keep my file sizes small. In addition to bringing in individual clips into the media browser, we can open specific Premiere projects. Now, we can't have two Premiere projects open at the same time, but I can open up a sequence from Project 1 and open that sequence inside Project 2. Or even more importantly, I can open a clip from Project 1 and have that clip displayed in Project 2. So let's say that I've got a project which is simply all of my selects for Scene 1. That's my project. Then. In the main edit, I can open up my selects only as a separate sequence and pull the ones that I want and edit them in without having to have all of my clips inside a single gigantic Premiere project. And to do that is as easy as navigating to it and double-clicking the project you want to open. There's yet another feature inside the media browser that can make our lives a lot easier, and it's these two buttons right up here, ingest and the wrench. These are 4K files, and on my system, I want to create proxies of these 4K files. How do I do that? Well, first, you select the file or files that you want to create proxies for. And let's just select these three files here to pick an arbitrary collection. Then check ingest. When you click the wrench icon, what this allows me to do is to copy the files, transcode the files so I could at the same time transcode from whatever the camera native media is into optimized media, which I recommend ProRes 4.2 on the Mac and GoPro Cineform on Windows. Or I can create proxies, or I can copy the file and create proxies. I'm going to create proxies. Then I can specify what size proxy I want. Proxies are almost always smaller than your source file. This is 4K file, but I don't need to create a 4K proxy. I'm going to create something much smaller to save space. On a Mac, I'd recommend ProRes 4 to 2 proxy with an aspect ratio that matches your source file. On Windows, I recommend the GoPro Cineform proxy, again, with an aspect ratio that matches your source file. So I'm going to set this to be a 1280 proxy and click OK. To import the file, hold the Control key down and click Import. Two things happen at the same time. First, the files are immediately brought into Premiere Pro, but in the background, Media Encoder is running, 
and Media Encoder is taking that proxy setting and creating proxy files automatically without me having to pay any attention to it for all the files that I selected. Then it links them so Premiere knows that those proxy files exist and where those proxy files are stored and what those proxy files are called. Now when I go back to Premiere, I can easily toggle between proxy files and camera native files. So how do I do that? Well, let's first just create a sequence here. Is this a proxy file or is this a master file? There's no way to tell. So we need to figure out a way to be able to enable or disable proxies. How do we do that? This brings me up to Premiere Pro and its preference settings. Now remember, when I went into the preferences, I was talking about proxies. And I wanted to find some way of being able to see what my proxies look like when my proxies are on. When in media, when proxies is enabled, proxies are displayed and edited in the timeline. When this is unchecked, I'm looking at camera native. When this is checked, I'm looking at proxies. The problem is I've got to keep going into that preference setting each time, which is a pain. I'd like something easier. And there is but it's not obvious. In the program monitor, click this plus icon right here. See this icon right here. If I grab that icon and drag it down, that icon represents the proxy toggle. This little shifting thing, notice a bigger square go into smaller square, click OK. When the proxy icon is white, I'm editing camera native. Click it. When the proxy icon is blue, I'm editing proxies. White, camera native, master file, blue, proxy. It's now as easy as toggling a button. <laughs> In the old days, the way that we would organize our files is with bins. I'm going to create a new bin. I'm going to call this media. And I would then, with that bin, I drag my fish inside the bin, and now I've got a fish bin, I've got a turtle bin, I've got a shark bin. There's nothing wrong with bins. Bins work. But bins are old style. One of the things that Adobe has added over the years is what's called a smart bin. A smart bin is essentially a dynamic search. Let me show you how this works. Let's go back to our fish clip right here, and let's open up the metadata window. Metadata is something that most of us have tried really, really hard to avoid, and we've been, <laughs> we've been really successful at it. But it allows us to label our clips without having to have a file name that's like the date, the actor, the location, the scene. Suddenly you've got this massive piece of code that you're looking at trying to figure out what the file name is about. Use metadata instead. Let's say that this is a close-up, and close-up, and it's a fish, and... It's, uh, it's the face of a fish. And now I've got a turtle, and this is a what? I've got a turtle. Cue the turtle. Just so you can see it, because I've seen these shots before. If I highlight the turtle, we know that this is a wide shot. It's a turtle. That's what it is. And uh, it's swimming. And here I have a shark. Trust me, it's a wide shot. It's a shark, and it's uh, swimming, as opposed to not swimming like that first fish, which is resting. We'll call it rest. So I now have, I've got a close-up, I've got a wide shot, and I've got a wide shot. If we go back to our project and bring this up again, I can create what's called a smart search. I want to find something which includes fish. And notice that it's found the two fish clips because fish is in the file name. Or I want to find a folder and call this turtle. Let's not do turtle, let's do swimming. And it found my sea turtle and my shark because both of those had swimming in the metadata. Well, the nice thing is this is dynamic. If I open up, let's go back to, where's my shark? If I take out the word swimming, the shark is no longer swimming. This list is now dynamic 
and after a few seconds, the shark is removed because it no longer has that metadata inside. So rather than start to use bizarrely long, complex file names or bins, and because a clip can only be in one bin at a time, you can use the metadata and the smart searches to put in multiple criteria, the scene number, for instance, or who the actors are, the clothing they wear, inside, outside, select take, not a select take. This is a much more effective way to work with media when it starts to get into the hundreds of clips than simply having a file name because you've got much more to work with, descriptions and comments and notes and all kinds of other things. So if, like me, you've been avoiding the metadata panel because uh, it's just too scary a term, it's time, especially as you get into to medium-sized and larger projects, to start to work with this some more. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at media management in video editing. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 260. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com membership. And thanks.